Hi, I'm King Cus, and I'm a synth DIY guy and welcome to today's video which is the last, the final installment in our video series about using the Bowfrog Excel by Erica Sins and Richie Houghton for teaching music synthesis and sound design. Without further ado, let's get to it. Today's video is about the expansion cards. So we've already talked about all the modules, all of the utilities and all we have left pretty much is the cards. Both the Bullfrog XL and the Little Bullfrog have a slot that allows you to insert these cards. Here you can really see it close up on the Little Bullfrog, right? So both these things have these slots for expansion cards. The initial use of these is for creating presets that you yourself can make with the preset cards that you get with the system. As you can see, these cards have exactly the same connections that you get on the front panel of the Bullfrog. The way that you create your presets with it is simply by replicating the connections. So you create a patch that you like, and then you solder wires to mimic and replicate the exact same connections that you've made on the front panel. And then once you've done that, you can put a title up here, and then you can simply insert the card in the slot on top of the Bullfrog XL and it'll make all those connections for you so you don't have to make them again. So it's a way to have a little library of presets that you like that you can go back to and reuse. Of course, it won't save your knob positions and switches and stuff. You have to do that manually. So you can probably accompany this with a little booklet, a little notebook where you have notes about each preset to remind you of what you need to do with knobs and switches and so on. And it also has a little bit of a kludge area over here and some slots for some op amps and resistors and so on that you can use to expand the circuitry in interesting ways beyond just replicating the connections there. And Erica have done that with a few ideas. So they have created the ADSR so this is an expanded, more advanced envelope generator than what you get on the panel there, than the ASR envelope generators. You also get a sequencer card with a three to five step sequence. Now you can control the pitch of each step with these faders here. So as you can see, some of these cards have added components such as sliders, faders, and so on. The electric organ, Right, and we'll get to all of these one by one in a minute. This is the high pass filter. So you have a low pass filter right here and this adds a high pass filter and together you can make a band pass filter if you use both of them together. And then I have two of these. This is the acid baseline. You might have this version of it or you might have this version of it. They're basically the same. And what these do is just a basic subtractive patch that you would get uh, out of a mini Moog or an SH-101 or something like that. Right now what I have here is the sampler looper card, right? That's this guy right here. It looks like a cassette tape, which is a nice touch. And this one has a little memory inside that allows you to record audio and you can manipulate the audio playback speed. You can uh, add, there's a ring modulator that you can add ring modulator effect to it. You can take sound from the synth or from the built-in microphone. There's a built-in microphone right here. So let's start with this one, because I've already been playing around with it. Let's just uh, have a look. First, we'll start with recording my voice, perhaps, right? I'm gonna hit the record, and I'm gonna make some vocal sounds into it, and then we'll play them back and manipulate them in interesting ways. So here we go. Hi, this is Kinkas, I'm a synth DIY guy, and I'm today showing you how to use the Erica Synth Bullfrog Sampler Looper card for the Bullfrog Synth. Right, so now I can hit, I put it on synth here, hit play, put it on loop, Bullfrog take it off the ring mod. Card for the Bullfrog synth. So here, now we're hearing a lo-fi recording of my voice, right? And it's going into the VCA. So when I turn up the VCA offset over here, you start hearing. And I can manipulate the playback speed with this little fader here. And the middle is super slow. You can go reverse to the left of the middle. And you can get faster to the right of the middle. Hi, this is Kinkas. I'm a synth DIY guy. 
Right, if I hit the ring mod here, then it starts adding this, the oscillator. You can use the tune knob to change the pitch of the ring modulation effect. Very cool. Right, and right now it's in loop. If I put it in gate, I need to hit the play. Very cool, right? Now I can also use the synth itself. Uh, as the input device. I flip the switch to synth, I hit record. And it'll either record the 10 seconds, that's the buffer, or if I hit record again, it'll stop when I hit record. But right now, let's just let it record the full 10 seconds. All right. So now I hit play, put it in loop, Right, and we can take the gate out now and turn up the offset and we hear that that recording and again I can speed it up slow it down and I can hit the ring mod and modulate it with the built-in VCO here Alright, so that's the first card. Super fun card, it's very experimental. It's inspired in like old laboratories, like the San Francisco Tape Music Society, the BBC, Electronic Music Labs, and so on. So that's number one, it's the weirdest one. So let's go to the more basic ones now. I'm just gonna pull out the card, pull out all of the patching. So this one is the electronic organ. The electronic organ is very simple. What it does is it sends the pulse wave to the divider and then sends the octaves that it generates back to a mixer that's built into the card, right? This card right here, the organ. And the little faders are basically the drawbars and they allow you to blend these octaves and create an organ-like kind of sound. Of course, an organ will actually have other harmonics than just octaves, but this just approximates the idea. Let's plug in the keyboard. Gate in, pitch. And we'll get the output into our audio path here. And we'll turn our pitch to the middle here. Tune on the VCO to the middle. If I turn all of these down, all we get is the top octave, right? Which is the combination of the pulse and sine, right? So here's the sine, here's the pulse. The filter acts, it, it does all the patching for you as well. The audio path is already pre-connected. So the mixer to the filter, the filter to the VCA. And you start getting octaves as you turn the drawbars up and down. And the filter is working as well. That was a very quick demo of the organ card. Of course, it's not polyphonic because this is not a polyphonic synthesizer. It's not really an organ, but you know, it's an approximation. You have draw bars for octaves, but you can do some really cool lead and bass sounds with it. All right, so that's one. Let's have a look at this one. This is the sequencer card right here. You have buttons for each step. You have faders for each step for the pitch. You have a switch that sets it from three to four to five steps. And uh, you have gate or LFO as clock source, right? Gate being the external gate. You can use it, either use the manual gate or you can send the gate from the keyboard. And LFO would be the sample and hold LFO here, the rate. A knob, right? Let's put this in. Uh, this one again also does all of the patching for you for the audio path. All right, so right now we have five steps. I can turn off a couple steps. All right, change the pitch, turn some steps back on. And 
Turn the rate faster, I see. Very cool. Maybe a little bit of delay. A little bit more volume. Cool, right? So if I turn all these down, you just get the lowest pitch. And then you can create your sequences this way. Here's three steps. It's almost like a ratchet, right? Pretty cool. Here's four steps. And here's five steps again. Which is inspired by the Buchla Music Easel. In fact, the whole card system is also inspired by the Buchla Music Easel. It was the first, and probably besides this synth and the Erica Synth's Pico system, I don't really know any other synths that have a card system like this besides the original, which was the Buchla Music Easel from the 70s. Cool, so that's it. That's a quick demonstration of the sequencer card. Let's pull it out. Now I have the ADSR. See, so you have the faders for attack, decay, sustain, release. Attack, decay, and release are time parameters, right? So attack is how long your envelope will go from zero volts to the maximum voltage. Decay is how long it'll take to go from that maximum voltage to your sustain level. And then sustain is actually a level, not a time, right? It's where, at which uh, voltage the envelope will sit after attack and decay while gate is still high. So if you're holding a key on your keyboard, for example, it'll stay on that sustain for as long as you're holding that key. And when you let go of the key, or when your gate goes low for any other reason, it enters the release stage, which is also a time. And basically it's the time it'll take to go from the sustain level that you've set with this fader to zero volts, right? So attack, decay, sustain, and then release. Right, so let's check it out. It has a release CV control, so you can control the release externally with something like a random voltage if you like. It has a loop switch, so you can loop this envelope just like the built-in envelopes, or you can leave it gated. It has an output, an extra output that you get, so you can send this to something else. If you have an expanded system with Eurorack, for example, you can use this envelope generator with an external system. So let's put it in. Right now, let's plug in the keyboard again. So I'm going to take it out of loop. And now when I hit the keyboard, you can see that the LED lights up over here. Right. And this envelope generator will actually be controlling both the filter and the VCA. So let's create our audio path here. Mix out to audio in of the filter, audio out of the filter to audio in of the VCA. And now I hit keys here. Let's listen to for the stages, right? So here we go. I'm going to hit the key and we're going to listen how it ramps up during the attack, how it ramps down during the decay, how it stays then at a sustained level. And then when I let go of the key, it'll go into release. Right? So it went and then down and now it's staying there at sustain. If I move the sustain, see? And it's moving both the uh, filtering and the VCA simultaneously. You can hear that, right? How it opens up the timbre as well as the volume. Right, if I put sustain to the, all the way to the bottom, it'll just die, right? So let's leave it kind of at a low setting. Now I'm gonna let go of the key and it's gonna go into the release stage. See? Rises, falls, stays in sustain. And I'm going to make the release slower. And there you have it. There you have the release. Now, if I want to use a different envelope for something, I can. So I can take the gate out of envelope generator 2 here uh, with just fast attack and slow release and send it to CV input 2. And now it's only affecting the filter. Oh, sorry, I'm using the gate here, uh, the envelope output. All right? So now the amplitude is no longer being affected by the ADSR, because I'm bypassing it by sending the second envelope generator output into the CV2 input of the VCA here. So this is only affecting the filter. Super cool, and it makes this a much more 
capable synthesizer because now you have a more advanced envelope generator, right? Okay, next one. This is the uh, high pass filter. You can choose the CV source between LFO, sample and hold, and envelope generator number two, right? So you have a switch here with three positions. I'm going to leave it on EG2. You have the CV level, you have the resonance and the cutoff, right? So I'm going to put this back in here. This makes the audio path connections for you, so I don't need these cables. See, it still works. And I probably don't need the envelope connection either. See, automatic. And here's our, here's our cutoff. Well, the resonance is way high, so it's chirping. Here we go. So now we have kind of a bandpass filter, right? Now if I open this guy more and close this one. Very cool. So this is useful, for example, if I want to make like a hi-hat sound with the white noise. Right, the white noise is kind of has that low end that uh, it's not good for hi hat, so I can remove it. Right, so that's the filter card, and last but not least, which should have been the first actually, this is the simplest card. This is the base, the acid baseline card, which I have two of, right. I'm going to use the black one that came with the Excel. This one came with the little bullfrog. All this does is make the synth into like a um, semi-modular where the main connections for a subtractive patch are pre-made for you. So you don't need to make the audio path uh, or the control path. Right, right. Now, now I play it and nothing happens. Once I stick this card in there and you can hot swap them, no problem. Now I can turn up my oscillator levels here. And, and it's working. So I can make bass lines and so on. So the only thing that's connected here is the keyboard to CV and gate and our monitoring path. All the other connections are being made by the card. This is a particularly useful one. For example, just want to make a bass line or a lead or something with the synth and you don't want to have to like do all the patching. The patching is interesting and useful for learning purposes, but for everyday use, you can bypass all that by just using the Acid Baseline card. All right, so that's it. I hope you like this video. I hope you like the series. I hope you like the Bullfrog Excel. I hope your students are enjoying learning with it. That's it for today and that's it for the Bullfrog Excel for now. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon and stay noisy.